Welcome to the Menopause and Cancer podcast, where we speak with cancer patients, survivors, and incredible menopause experts to help us find solutions to our symptoms and ideas to improve our health. My name is Danny Binnington. I'm going to keep it really, really short because today is a celebration of all of you. We've come to 100 amazing episodes on our podcast, and I want to bring a very special person onto the show that has helped us all to have these conversations every single week. And I'm going to bring her in in a moment. But before I do so, let me reassure you that I can't thank each one of you enough for listening. And I know you all take something else away with you from this podcast and so let the conversation and the celebration continue well beyond into our 500th episode whenever that may be a hundred episodes phoebe (laughs) i cannot believe it we're here two years later unbelievable welcome to the podcast i want to introduce you to everyone phoebe to everyone that has listened to even one or all of our Menopause and Cancer podcast um, episodes. This is Phoebe. Phoebe is the woman who has edited and helped me to get this podcast out to you every single week. And so welcome, Phoebe. Oh, it's an absolute honour to be here. I actually can't believe I'm behind the mic talking to you, Danny. <laughs> I mean, as a woman who is probably entering perimenopause and we've worked together for the last two years, you've learned an awful lot, right? Um, literally, basically everything I know about perimenopause, menopause, general women issues, definitely cancer and how it can affect you have I have learned completely from your editing this podcast 100%. And Mm. it's um, well, what was crazy was how little I knew, (laughs) which is also a bit embarrassing, considering I have a mum and I've got two older sisters, and yet still clueless and also um I don't know just how much information that there is and like how much I've learned oh my god it's been incredible every week I'm like oh what am I going to learn today (laughs) (laughs) hey I want to say thank you because without an amazing editor and a team like you I don't think we would be here I know we wouldn't be here today I have the best intentions of getting all these amazing experts onto the show and I want to get that information out there, but I couldn't keep up with the whole process. It's like a whole dinosaur behind these conversations, isn't it? It's a lot of work. We're scheduling every single week. We've not failed at all every week. We've gone out every Wednesday morning and the podcast is there for everyone to listen to. And I want to celebrate our efforts today, really, because... Um, you know, there were times when you emailed me and you said, Danny, we've got no episode in the bank. What are you going to do? What's next? And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. And then we have weeks where we have loads of episodes in the bank. How was that for you? Was it very stressful? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, I was hoping you'd say, oh no. <laughs> no, I think because you have um, a dedicated following and um, the obviously is an expectation for um, an episode to be out every Wednesday. And if I don't see a recording in the folder, I'm like, "Uh oh, and then I have to think about the turnaround time and how long it's going to edit. And like, I'm like, if you are going to do a last minute one, Danny, can you make it shorter than your usual ones? (laughs) Um, But um, you're right. We haven't missed a week, I don't think. And that is down to also your absolute dedication to you know finding inspiration when perhaps that might be missing for a few days in one week and you do you Mm. manage to pull out the bag it's lovely I mean Mm. it's it's a big you know deal to do this every week for sure but it is also incredibly easy because I am just so dedicated to doing this because of all of our listeners and I know a lot of them in person now and I've met them at workshops and events and I know these are real people we email and I have all of these real connections and so it makes it very easy because I know the need is huge and I know who these amazing people are that are listening and what they gain from the podcast and so it's very easy for me to really be this dedicated and I just feel I have this fire and I can't see it sort of this diminish in a way I just feel not outraged, you know, I had rage in the early days 
I have more raw, I think, than ever to do the right thing. And so it's actually a really easy thing for me to do. But I'm just looking at these stats, Phoebe, and what's been astonishing. And I think for all of you out there listening to this, I want to share that with you. We have people from all over the world listening to this. So if you are anywhere in the world, however isolated you feel you are in your experiences of managing menopause after cancer, you're not alone. Singapore, Uruguay, Thailand, the Philippines, Japan, India, Mauritius, 11 people from Iraq, 11 people from Kenya. We had people listening from the Netherlands, Greece, Barbados. And I just really want all of you to know that our shared experiences are so much more than the communities we live in. And I just want to note a few people here. One person has been listening in Andorra. Wow. Two people have listened in Uganda. Two people have listened in Panama. In St. Lucia, we had three people listen. All the way to thousands and thousands of people that have listened in the UK and United States. And to me, Phoebe, it doesn't make any odds where people listen from. Mm -hmm. Whether they're part of the thousands or whether they're the one person that might have accidentally stumbled across this podcast, every single person means as much to me as the next. And I think that's why it's such a joy to be here because I, I kind of have them in my heart somehow. Does that sound mad? Is no, it, mad? it doesn't sound mad at all. And I think that is part of, you know, not it's not just a necessity, the Menopause and Cancer podcast, but it's also you and your passion and your love for each listener and the importance you put on them that comes across. Well, I think so anyway. And that's why I think your audience has built and built and built. They're not going to listen to you if they don't want to listen to you. That's the, that's the choice of a listener. They don't have to, mm. but they do. They choose to come back every week. And it can't just be because of the experts that you have on. It's, you know, you're... You're, you're the menopause of cancer lady, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and I just hope that everyone who's listening today can celebrate their own journey a little bit. I know we're here celebrating 100 episodes. I wanted to bring you on because you are the person that is integral to me to, to, to really doing this. I had Tim on last week and I wanted my husband on the show because he's, you know, a really important person in my life, but also, you know, being with him, it enables me to do this as well. He always encourages me. And I hope people can celebrate their own success today. And that's really why we wanted to come and do a bit of a special episode. I want people to reflect back on when they first listened to the podcast, how they felt then, who they were as a person, what life stage they went through. You know, a lot of people listen when they're first diagnosed, for example. Mm -hmm. And our episodes are sort of like taking them through treatment sometimes and I want people to reflect on where they're at today with you know how do they spend their lives are they feeling maybe better or worse because sometimes we have real setbacks in life and life doesn't take us to where we expect it to take us and I want this to be a celebration of where people are whether they've headed into the right direction or not we put so much effort into our living days don't we and we hardly celebrate ourselves and I know you had a daughter that started school in the last year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big milestones happening. You've also changed and added things to your career. I can see a gong behind you in the in the little picture there. Can you tell us a bit about that? You're not just an amazing podcast editor, but what have you done? Yes. So I've always been ruled by sound and worked in radio and then worked in podcasting and I thought I'd just take it to the next level which is doing sound baths with my massive gong here this is a 38 inch symphonic gong <laughs> I've also got a smaller Venus um, which is tuned to the planet Venus and basically I'm doing a course um, a year-long course to um, do sound baths for people to help to help them and to you know some people want to be more relaxed some people just want to lie there some people need um deeper help uh it could be a physical ailment or a mental ailment and the gongs treat you on a cellular level they change you uh through their vibrations which is just so beautiful isn't it because you think 
our conversations on the podcast, we know it changes people's lives in very many different ways because we have so much feedback and people send reviews and emails. But sound can be so healing. And we have plenty of evidence that sound and sound baths have a healing impact on people. You must have learned a lot by doing this over the last year. Yeah, loads. I mean, lots about myself because you have yeah. to treat yourself as you're doing the process. So you have to gong every day. Uh, and also when you're playing the gong for other people, you're also getting the benefits. Uh, there's no way around it because you're <laughs> literally facing the gong full on. Um, and so I have to do case studies for people and uh, I've had many volunteers that want to get involved which is fantastic and some people have, have the feedback is they've really changed some people who are suffering uh, with perimenopause are more calmer especially around mm. their toddlers so that makes a big difference <laughs> when you can feel the rage building up and some people just need it as like an hour to lie mm. down and not looking at their phones or, the, mm. or a screen or just to be separate and and it's not doing something physical I think we're always encouraged to do you know um, exercise or gym or anything mm. but sometimes you just want a time out and that's what mm. lying in a gong bath can do. Mm. Thank you for sharing that I think there is so much wisdom and learning in that isn't it which is often what we talk about in the episodes you can have the best doctors giving you all of the scientific evidence but you really still need to go out into this world and find the healing modalities that work for you and they'll be different from one year to the next and it's so important to talk about everything that is out there because you just don't know what's it going to be for you you just don't know what what's going to be amazing for you and so yeah I, I love that you are the woman of the sound you make our podcast sound amazing and we get a lot of um we get a lot of praise from big podcasts um you know, when they email us about hours saying your sounds really good. And so, yeah, amazing. Thank you, Phoebe. Oh, thank you, Danny. <laughs> We've also got some lovely voice notes to share from mm -hmm. people, don't we, today? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, shall we play one of them? Shall we do Let's it right do now? Okay. Yeah. The Menopause and Cancer podcast has been a lifesaver. I came across it shortly after I was diagnosed with breast cancer and at a point when I didn't know where I could find information about how to cope with menopausal symptoms, knowing that I'd been told to stop HRT. And what I didn't know at that point was that some of the drugs I would then be prescribed would exacerbate those symptoms. But listening to Danny on the podcast, along with her expert guests, has taught me so many things I can do to reduce specific symptoms. One episode which sticks in my mind is the sleep episode with Dr Zoe Shadell and I go back to it again and again because there are so many practical tips that have helped me improve my sleep. And not only that, listening to the podcast and listening to Danny, I have become stronger in advocating for myself and been able to communicate with my medical team with confidence and knowledge and that has helped me immensely. So a huge thank you to Danny and all the experts who have been part of the podcast. Congratulations on episode 100. Oh, so this particular voice note, Phoebe, is from Rachel, who is now our second director at our community interest company, Menopause and Cancer. And I remember putting the Facebook post out in the group, being quite outraged about the lack of justice there is for cancer survivors and Rachel got in touch saying I want to help you do something you know I want to help you move this on to the next level and Rachel has been mm -hmm. amazing we didn't even have a website before Rachel joined us Rachel became my mentor Rachel said right we need resources we need this and she's just a businesswoman amazing and so she's now part of our team and we wouldn't be here doing all these amazing things without her. So thank you, Rachel, for that voice note. <laughs> oh, lovely. Big up, Rachel. Okay, so in this episode, I am going to attempt to interview you a little bit, Danny, because I think we want to know a little bit more about you. Um, <laughs> and so the first question is, is we've sort of covered it a little bit, but what brought you here to this moment, to your 100th 
episode of your podcast. How did you get here? Hey, thanks for watching this episode. 73% of people who watch my podcast haven't yet clicked the subscribe button and 11% haven't hit the button to turn on notifications. I want these conversations to reach as many women as possible who might need to hear them. So if you've ever enjoyed listening to this podcast, please hit subscribe now. I think if I'm going to celebrate myself today, because I'm asking everyone to celebrate themselves as well, what I really want to celebrate for myself today is that I'm a really good networker and connector and I have a real passion for people and I have a real passion for their stories. And I think I'm actually not very clever. I don't retain a lot of information. I speak to so many experts and actually, Phoebe, I should know a lot more than I do. But my real passion is people and trying to understand how we evolve. For example, at the moment, I'm running a, 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 one of our Empowered Menopause programs with a small group of people. And what I've really learned over and over again is not our medical appointments that help us the most. It's not the information from doctors that help us the most but it's the conversations in between and what we do with that information. And I've got such a passion to learn and understand more about that because I think once we really know how we can move forward, we can make big change, each one of us. Rick, you can know so much and not move forward. That's mm. what I'm trying to say. Or you know a little bit of something and you can head into the right direction. And I think I've got a passion for that. And and that is never going to end, is it? Because there'll always be people, there'll always be stories, and there'll always be my curiosity. Uh, yeah, I think it's being curious about mm -hmm. finding out more about people. What, and that's led me to here. Yeah, wow. Okay. And when you first started, when you first recorded your first ever episode, did you have a vision of how successful, successful it was going to be? And... Um, now that you're 100 episodes in, when you look back, how, how does it measure up, I guess, is the question. Yeah, I had no vision. I just knew these conversation needed to happen. <laughs> and I invested, as you know, my own money to get the show off the ground, my own time. Everything just happened because I was so convinced these conversations Mm -hmm. need to happen. I'm not very good at business planning. And many people that know me, Rachel included, she'll go, yes, I know. I don't have these sort of grand plans. I just know things need to happen. And I'm good at getting stuff off the ground. And so when, for example, we did our last challenge last year, and we did the walk, some of my um, friends who run charities said to me, so Danny, what's your goal? How much do you want to raise? What's your mission for this fundraiser? And I said, I don't know, just to have lots of people walk with us. And they said, well, you need to have a goal. Like, is it 10,000 you want to raise or 20,000? And I was like, okay, right. I understand I need to have these goals. With the podcast, there wasn't such a goal. And we were quite steady with our downloads for quite some time. And they meant the world to me because 2,000 people meant 2,000 people listen to our conversation. And then 5,000 mm -hmm. people meant 5,000 people listen to these amazing doctors and then 15,000 people listened to some of our doctors and I remember talking to you thinking oh my gosh is the respons responsibility sort of yeah. really the feeling of responsibilities kicking in even more so and then 20,000 people listened to our conversations and I remember you and I still can't quite believe it right we can't quite believe that no. all these people because when initially we thought it would be a small group. And so, yeah, it's been a wild journey. It's It's been a crazy journey. And I know we can do so much better still uh, because there are hundreds and thousands and millions of people out there. And so I'm going to ask everyone today to share our conversations with at least one person to really create that ripple effect. And if that is your breast care nurse, your oncologist, your best friend, your friend whose mother might have been diagnosed with cancer, I'd love for you at home today to share these conversations because I didn't know who needed to listen to them when I first set out without any expectation. And I think people also don't know who might benefit from the conversations. So let's share it just in hope, in the case, in, in case, in hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely get it out there as far as we can and I, I I remember when we were looking we were sort of refreshing the downloads and we just couldn't believe how they just kept going 
higher and higher, which, you know, in one breath, uh, it's amazing that so many people listen to. In the other breath, I go, oh, it's, you know, a tragedy that so many people have to listen. It's a lot, yeah. isn't it? It's a lot. Yeah. But I think we should listen to another voice note. To I'd love your... that. Yeah. So uh, this is a voice note from Terry. I think when it boils down to it, what I've gained from the podcast is that I no longer feel alone in my situation. I thankfully don't know anybody else who's had breast cancer personally that is um, close to me. I don't know anybody who's gone through anything like what I've gone through. I don't know anybody who has been in the same position at me at the age I was, who has had experiences like me since then and it's not that I've specifically met anybody through the podcast through the community who has but simply by listening to the podcast episodes and not even through doing the the empowered menopause program literally just through listening to the podcasts I feel less alone and I feel more seen I guess and I don't think I realized until I was listening to the podcast how alone I felt and it's it's inevitable really if you don't have anybody around you who has gone through a similar experience or at a similar age or whatever it's inevitable I guess that you would feel alone but now I feel a lot less alone and for that I thank you. So, yes, yeah, so that is the gorgeous Terry. So Terry came into our Empowered Menopause program, actually. Um, was it last year now? And Terry was many years on from her initial cancer diagnosis and she still had no help. The GP didn't know what to do with her because she's got a history of cancer. She had no access to an oncologist anymore or even breast care nurse. And she just felt like there was no one taking ownership or helping her navigate this. And the reason it's lovely you're actually playing Terry's voice note is that it doesn't matter where you're at in this journey. Menopause after cancer is so relevant. However, we often feel that the more time progresses or goes by since our initial diagnosis, people think they should be doing better than they're doing. They feel like they should have it sorted. They feel like the cancer hangover shouldn't still impact them and their life, but it does, whether you're two years on, five years on, 10 years on, 15 years on. And not just with our symptoms, but also our long-term health, as we know from all these conversations, get it's impacted. And that's why I feel as an organization now and as a podcast, we want to provide support forever, regardless of how long people are on and going through this, to normalize the massive impact this has on us for the rest of our lives. Um, and to always be here with open arms, because it, I don't know when people need to hear our conversations and sometimes people don't know themselves. And so we're here for you is what I want to say. Yeah, that's beautiful. Cause I think there's um, a theme, especially with the voice notes that you received about not feeling alone when they listen to your podcast. And I think you're definitely like the friendly voice, whether they're part of, you know, your Facebook community or one of your courses, I think just having someone to listen to, creates that feeling of community um and when you started was that part of your thinking I know you said you didn't really plan but <laughs> was it to create this feeling of a community amongst you know people in your situation with surviving after cancer yeah a hundred percent so I initially years ago set up a normal Facebook group for perimenopausal and menopausal women mm -hmm. and that grew loads through lockdown like so many of the menopause conversations did and we had thousands of people in there uh, chatting but more and more when I had cancer survivors come in and they asked and talked about their particular challenge some of the other ladies would come in and give very well-meaning advice oh why don't you go on HRT or why don't you try this or oh collagen is amazing for my joints and then the people with a history of cancer would say oh it's not that easy for me but thank you very much you know and I kept feeling this is not the right community I kept thinking I love Davina McCall and as you know I've just been on two mm -hmm. Instagram lives with her and that was a great highlight you know this month for example but I kept thinking this isn't the right community we need to create a very special unique and dedicated community where people have 
different experiences, but still the same challenges. Um, and so it was key for me to give ourselves this designated area, this designated space, so that we don't have to bark up the wrong tree. Because I want Davina to do what she does. It's important. Mm -hmm. But I also want people to feel that this is not the only information out there. And I think the podcast is just sort of like um, just another layer to that community because not everyone wants to be a part of a Facebook group. Not everyone is, you know, it's there are different ways of learning, I know, and different people like different things. And some people are much better at processing themselves by listening to the conversations and then putting in place all the hacks we talk about. And some people want that exchange. And there is no right or wrong because I have a lot of people email us saying, I've been the quiet one at the back. I've been in the Facebook group. I've never posted. I've never commented, but I've read. And I can't tell you how amazing it has been for me to just read other mm -hmm. people's exchanges. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's fantastic. You do you. Just because I like to chat and mull it over with other people doesn't mean you have to. And you do you is probably a key message you do you in whatever community works for you. We still need to find out what's best for for us. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. And you know, you're you're in the process of doing it, and I think that's incredible. Okay, so I'm going to ask you about some specific episodes, if you don't mind. <laughs> what did have you had um, like a, a a changing powerful moment when you were talking to someone specific in an interview with one of your podcast episodes? Like mm. either like a light bulb moment or a switch of how you're thinking. So there's a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, I had one sort of like moment and that wasn't what I've learned in the episode. But when I was approached by a production company that offered Tim Spector to come onto the podcast, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm sure they've got the wrong email. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, do they mean Tim Spector to come onto my podcast? Do they know how small we are? And I was also offered Dr. Um, researcher, Dr. Sarah Berry for that podcast, who also works with him on Zoe. And I chose her to come on because I think she's amazing. I'm, I also think Tim is amazing. But I felt as a woman, I wanted to sort of tap into her research, wisdom, knowledge, and really talk about also how few women have made it into research and how few how little data we have about women in research. And so that was definitely a moment where I thought, oh my gosh, this is something is changing here. I felt our podcast is sort of getting out there. We are being offered amazing people like that to come onto the show. Um, and in terms of learning, I learn from every single episode. Mm -hmm. I have not walked away from a single episode where I have not learned for myself as a patient, because you always need to remember I am the patient. I do this because I have always, I will always be in surgically onset menopause now. And that always needs managing and it needs managing in various different ways. At the moment, for example, I've got the itchiest, itchiest skin and it's weird. Mm. And it's one of those symptoms. I know it's not life threatening. I know it's just a bit of itchy skin, but it's not just itchy skin. So if anyone is listening to this and you want to pull the skin on your shins off every evening and I can't go to sleep with it, it's the oddest sensation. And so I learn from every episode because in essence, yes, they are for everyone, but they're also for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't know itchy skin was a was something that occurred. See, I'm learning every every second of every day. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so should we do another voice note from, should we do a voice note from Susie? I remember exactly where I was when I started listening to Danny's podcast. I started right back with podcast number one back in 2023, which in fact was two years after my own cancer journey. Um, but it was amazing because I heard actual voices and for the first time, I heard voices of women who'd been through the same thing as me. And I wasn't alone anymore. Ah, yeah, the lovely Susie. So I hope, Susie, you don't mind me saying this to thousands of people. But Susie joined our walking challenge last year, the walking fundraiser. And Susie absolutely loved it. And what was so amazing there is Susie is busy. Uh, she's a mum. She's got a busy job. She's also, you know, after her cancer diagnosis, muddling through um, menopause, but Susie took to the roads in the evening 
and she lives around Bristol and I had lots of um, lovely, not lots, but a few lovely pictures of Susie walking in the rain at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday evening, <laughs> walking the streets to get her steps in and loving it. And what was so beautiful about that is we all walk and no one has to walk very far, but by changing the times of the day we walk, we can explore so much of this world. And we talked about that with Susie and she said, yeah, there's all these people going out clubbing in their little shoes and their cold outside clubs and there's me walking and it just created such a positive experience. And I think that really taught me that we can do so much as a community without a lot of money. We don't have to spend much, nothing. You just put your walking shoes on mm -hmm. and out you go. And I think small habits can have such a big impact and bring you so much joy. And so, yeah, that was lovely to witness for Susie. Oh, lovely. Okay, so moving slightly away from the podcast, Danny, what do you do to take time out for yourself? Do, is it you know, how I can sometimes imagine you, Danny, just, you know, purely mindful, just yoga, meditation, or do you have like guilty pleasure that you do something like that? I don't know. Mine is currently watching Married at First Sight. Uh... <laughs> how about you? I think at the moment, if I'm going to be really truthful here, my sort of balance of work and self-care is quite skewed I don't do much of that I work really hard at the moment and I put loads of hours in and I start early and I finish late mm -hmm. um, I still teach yoga as many of you know and that's fantastic so I sort of do my yoga whilst I teach it I know that's not right and I should still go to my own classes but I've with the with the kids I know they're teenagers but they still require a lot of my attention and working lots trying to spin all of these different plates I think I need to put a bit more attention and sort of back into my self-care I, I watch little telly at the moment because I don't have lots of time for that either and so I think my guilty pleasure is work at the moment is that bad but there is so much to do Phoebe I agree Danny but yes no that is bad <laughs> okay <laughs> Do you think everyone that's listening to our conversation now is going to go, oh, my God, we need to teach Danny a thing or two. Yeah. She hasn't paid any attention to her own episodes. Exactly. Um, exactly that. That's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to be like, Danny, listen to your own words. I know. I'm really passionate about work, as lots of you know. I'm excited about all of the projects this year. We're going to run a CPD course for healthcare professionals. So that lots of doctors, nurses, oncologists, um, clinicians can learn about how to help someone after cancer through the menopause better. That's a huge project. Uh, but I'm excited about that because I think it's going to really create a lot of change internally within the NHS. Our services are being listed on the Macmillan website at the moment. You know, these are big steps we're mm. making to get the message out there. So I'm going to plow away but we are launching another walking challenge for September and I want to do it and I walk and I want to walk the 30 miles over two days and we give p different options for people but I know I need to walk again for that mm -hmm. to train yeah. and that walking was great and for me a challenge is a good thing even if you know my destination is a long walk for myself I like a challenge, I like to track, I like to have a goal that keeps me sort of motivated and keeps me doing it. And it's springtime now, I can't, you know, I love watching the seasons change mm. and I, I want to get out there and Susie will be my inspiration <laughs> and I'm going to go out there and just do a lot more walking again. That sounds great. Way more constructive than watching reality TV. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you're allowed your guilty pleasure. Oh, thanks, Daddy. But also, Phoebe, I was going to say, did you actually really pay attention to all of our podcast episodes? I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK, uh, I can see you flushing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's talk about our vaginal and vulval health, because you know how we always talk about it. Yes. What have you learned for any woman who's going through perimenopause, menopause, for any reason, some top tips to look after our vaginal and sexual health what have you learned what have I learned okay so on the shopping list 
<laughs> that I haven't needed to invest in just yet, but it's literally just I can see it around the corner. Um, <laughs> moisture, vaginal moisturizers. That's a thing. That's a thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't know that before your episode, right? So moisturizers, lubes. Um, right. Uh, I feel like that's it. Is it just those two things? Is there more? Moisturizers, lubes, and as soon as that doesn't really quite work, vaginal estrogens would be a great addition to anyone's toolbox. Okay. <laughs> Right. Okay. So those three. So moisturizers, lubes, estrogen. I'm about to say estrogens. No, just estrogen. <laughs> Vaginal. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You successfully made me blush quite badly there, Danny. Thank you. <laughs> ah, I love it. You know what? It's always. I always think who these episodes obviously go to. I always think when you edit them, you know what goes through your mind and I think it's important we continue to do so isn't it because every episode lands differently with people and whether you need it now or whether you might need this information later and further down the line as long as we think oh I've heard this it's in the back of my mind that's that's a great thing when when we have our sort of nutrition episodes Phoebe uh, our lifestyle episodes do you sometimes walk away and feel a bit more inspired to cook healthily or try some I don't know, a different way of eating or moving. How do you feel about those? Uh, completely. So I have, I think, you, is it five or six ingredients that you try to do in every meal? Yeah, is it six? Well, in, in my, yeah, yeah, six. Six, yeah. yeah. So I've been doing that. And actually, sometimes I find it quite hard. I'm like, oh, I need yeah. to add, what can I add, some carrots? I don't know. Uh, so I've been trying to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and also... Um, I'm a lifelong vegetarian, so I think finding, you know, good proteins and things like that um, and stepping away from processed proteins that are really easy to fall into the habit of get, eating. Uh, yeah, I've learned loads and I've been getting a veggie box delivered to increase nice. the vegetable load and vegetables. Uh, so, yeah, no, completely changed. Definitely in the last year, I'd say. I think maybe the first year yeah. I was being a bit like, yeah, fine. And then I was like, oh, no, let's change things up. I'm going to listen to Danny and her guests. <laughs> She's still talking about it. There must be something in it. <laughs> exactly. But we are really, because I think a lot of us know what healthy eating is and that we could all eat a bit healthier, right? I, it, anything else would be assuming that we're all a bit thick. So I do know we all know that the Coca-Cola might not be the right thing for us. And, you know, the third Mars bar is probably too, too many. Um, but it is very hard to put that into practice and it takes a bit of time. And sometimes we are lacking inspiration, which is why I think our current fundraiser, our supper social mm -hmm. that we're running is so popular with a lot of people because it allows us to give people healthy recipes. But instead of saying, here you go, here's some healthy recipes, because you could find them all over the internet. We're saying, get together with your friends. Choose a date, host a supper social and cook together because sometimes you just need to mix it up and you need to have a really happy and positive environment. And, you know, when you're in someone else's kitchen and you go, "Ooh, my friend's got, I don't know, this in the cupboard and what's this? And you're suddenly more excited when you just try and cook together. And it's a social gathering. It's pleasurable beyond the taste buds in our mouth. You know, there are so many joys we experience from socializing. And so I really wanted to take the knowledge we've learned from our episodes and make it into something practical for people at home, whether you listen from Zimbabwe, like we just said earlier, um, or whether you're in the UK, you can get together with your friends, choose some of our healthier re recipes. And before you know it, if you've got a favorite, it might become part of your routine. Um, and it's mixing it up. Yeah, I enjoy that. I I enjoy creating experiences, as you know. Mm, yeah, and I did you share, was it the tofu chocolate mousse? Was it the other Phoebe that made that? That looked incredible. Yeah. Was yeah. it delicious? And 
And so for anyone um, that doesn't know, we've just had a really lovely, fantastic young member join our menopause and cancer team. She's also called Phoebe. And um, Phoebe is perfectly suited for us. Phoebe loves healthy eating. She's super quick. She does all of our marketing now. She's a wizard. Um, and Phoebe just comes up with all of these fantastic recipes. Two or three ingredients. It's dark chocolate. It's silken tofu and it's a little bit of maple syrup or honey and you whiz it into a mousse and oh my gosh the problem i had is i had one portion that was offered to me but i could have had 10 portions <laughs> it's so delicious full of plant-based proteins but i wouldn't have known that if we hadn't gotten together and hosted a supper social and for phoebe to say i do pudding or you know i bring ingredients and we all tried it mm. because if you had told me how easy it is i wouldn't have believed you but it is so easy and it is so healthy and that's what we want to share with people that's so lovely gorgeous okay so we've covered lots of things um i would like to ask you if because a lot of the interviews that I mean, I love to edit and listen to uh, your survivor stories. I think some of them are just, in actually, they're all incredible. All the women, they have such strength in their voice and their stories that they tell. Um, is there one in particular that really touched you when you were listening to uh, their story? Mm, no, every single mm. one touches me the same. Yeah. Every And I can say that with conviction. I, I can understand so much where people have come from, how hard they're trying, you know, for everyone to listen to this conversation means you're trying at home. Mm -hmm. It means you're trying to improve how you're feeling by having listened to one, two, five or a hundred of our episodes. And I give you so much credit for that because when we are at our lowest, when our life has changed beyond control, energy is often very low and our mental health is low as well anxiety, depression, um, lack of concentration, all of that has not just mental effects, but also physical effects. It makes us very exhausted. It makes us, you know, sometimes you can't follow through with anything because you're all over the place. Your heart rate is up. Sometimes that has effects on our bowels and suddenly you need the toilet all the time and you can't sleep. And so the effects are huge. And so for all of you to do this and for some of you to then decide to come and talk to me on the podcast, I just know the engagement and the effort is huge and I can't thank them enough. Mm. And so there is definitely no favorite. They're yeah. all amazing. They're all amazing. Yeah, truly amazing. Shall we listen to one of the last, the last voice that we've got actually from Siobhan? Yeah. Okay. There really isn't enough adjectives to describe how um, good you are. Um, I just found everything that you have talked about has been even better than having some chats with my oncologist because I'm from Ireland they're a little bit behind with meds and stuff um, and they really haven't got the time to you know a lot of them are so overworked and they're just reading from a script but some who did give me the time and some who did I paid privately for were helpful but to be honest with you you had helped me pad out stuff for the conversation with them with all your kind of cutting edge stuff and you have a lovely way of interviewing too. So thank you. You're brilliant. Yeah. So this voice note was sent to me on Instagram and I didn't know this person was um, obviously listening to the podcast episodes and what a lovely, lovely voice note to receive. And thank you so much for making the effort of sending it as well, which is great. Um, Phoebe, thank you for celebrating everyone at home with me today, because it, it's tr a true celebration of every single one of our listeners across the whole world. Um, it's thank been great to chat to you. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. It's been so nice and uh, an absolute honour and a pleasure to work with you on this podcast. It's been amazing. Quite a journey. Yeah, quite a journey. And um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. And I am excited to talk to you on episode 101 next week. <laughs>